Hello and welcome to The Bestseller Experiment, where we explore the inner game of writing and life and inspire you to start, finish and publish a best-selling book. I'm Mark DeVoe and a very special welcome to this, the 500th episode of The Bestseller Experiment. I don't think when we started this podcast, I'd ever be saying those words. I would like to firstly thank you for listening whether you've been here today for the first time or whether you are one of those people who I know who are out there who've listened to all 500 episodes, which is incredible. But there's so much to celebrate in this episode. It really feels like a massive, massive milestone in our kind of journey. And I really think it in many ways it mirrors what it's like writing. It's been such an incredible journey. We've been recording this podcast for seven and a half years now. And I worked out that that was a total of about 600 hours of recording. And if you take into account all of the work that was done to create these episodes, that's over 15,000 hours of work across myself and Mark Stay, obviously, and uh, also the team as well that we have behind this podcast to help us do the editing and social media, booking guests and all the things that go on behind the scenes that you, you know, you probably don't see much of. But today really is a celebration of those 500 episodes. And I want to take a bit of time just to reflect on what we've learned through this process, because when we started this podcast, we really set out on the journey to find a formula for a best-selling book. Like, what does it take? What are the seven secret ingredients that it takes to write a best-selling book? But what we've discovered through the journey of the many, many interviews and the analysis of the interviews and discussions and talking around what it takes to actually go through this incredible process of writing a book, we've learned so much more. In fact, you know, the formula for a best-selling book that we we're always looking for, really, you know, there is no secret source. And we know that every single person, including you know, every single person listening to this podcast right now, has a unique way of writing and approaching their writing. Uh, there are definitely best practices, um, which we'll be talking a little bit about today. But I really want to go really big today and go into some of the deeper reasons why we write. And the reason why we kind of focus this episode around this idea of the 500 reasons to write is every single episode that we've done, there's always been one or many, many nuggets of information uh, about craft, about mindset, uh, about planning, about goal setting, about accountability, which have really given us um, insights into different ways of thinking about how we write. And I know for many of you, uh, you've had breakthrough moments where you've heard an author say, you know, just casually throw in a line or talk about something that inspired them or something they learned. And it's really, really changed the way in which you've seen your writing and, you know, just the countless stories that you've sent in telling us about that has been absolutely incredible. Um, and it's great to get that feedback as well, because then we get to kind of like really learn about what types of information and advice have been really, really valuable to you. Um, but before we go into what I call the six reasons why people write, obviously we could do 500, but we'd be here all night. But the main six things that I've learned, I just want to kind of give you another bit of perspective about what we've done to create this podcast. There have been thousands of social media posts. I don't know how many on Twitter alone, but like many, many thousands. Uh, I was looking today at the 200 word challenge. And for any of you that are unfamiliar with that, it's the challenge that we've been running for a few years where you you write 200 words a day as a minimum and you really challenge yourself to kind of get that down as a writing habit. And uh, I looked at the total so far just before we went live today with this recording and we're up to 40 million words that have been banked by bestseller experiment listeners and by bestseller academy members as well, which is absolutely phenomenal. So if you were one of those people that banked, you know, whether it was 200 words or several thousand words or more, um, Thank you for being a part of that because it's been absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant to to see just how people have embraced that challenge. And by the way, if you want to kind of find out more about that, if it's the first time you've heard about that, you can go and check it out at 200wordchallenge.com. The other thing that we've uh, discovered through the many email messages and social media messages that we've had is um, there have both been many new writers who have you know, really started their journey of writing their first book with a podcast. But also there's many writers who had given up 
and restarted. Um, we've even done interviews with some best-selling authors who who said that when they discovered the po- podcast, it gave them that kind of fire again to get going and re- reignited them to really follow their follow their writing dreams. Um, I do have this mantra that says, you know, we can try and leave writing, but writing will never leave us. So you know, escape as you might try, it always you always get at some point reinvigorated and, and uh, it's something that you want to be engaging with for the rest of your life. We've also seen many thousands of books completed. Some of those um, you know, have been incredible, like people writing in the credits, you know, how the podcast or certain interviews have helped them. Uh, how the academies help them to get to the end of their book. Um, but it's been amazing to see the amount of books that have been birthed, uh, you know, partly or fully because of the incredible wisdom that so many authors have shared with us on this podcast. We've also heard about countless agent deals uh, and major publishing deals, like almost every single major publisher out there. We've heard about listeners to the show landing deals with with their books, which has been absolutely brilliant. And also for people that have gone the indie route as well, indie authors who've gone out there and done it on their own. They've, you know, put their book up on Amazon. They've, they've started writing series and um, they've started building their own audience, doing their own marketing, you know, washing the dishes, everything. I mean, it takes everything to do that when you go down that route. But for the, the, all the successful indie authors out there and everyone who's on their way down that route as well, we totally salute you um, as you, as you, you know, you know, inspire others through your journey. We've also heard about countless award winners from writing competitions like two weeks ago, the episode on short stories with Karen Story, but also huge wins for people like Ian Sainsbury with the Kindle Storyteller Award. Lorna Cook, who won the RNA, um, number of RNA awards as well for the work that she's done. So, so many amazing award winners have, have shown up as well and told us about their successes. And the bit that still excites me, which, you know, is the yet to be told stories because we know that sometimes it can take a long time to go through the process of even just writing the book. But I, I know that in the future, there will be people um, out there with pushing their books out there that maybe started life listening to this podcast. And um, I'm so excited, you know, if that's you, if you feel that that's in your journey, if you've got this kind of almost knowing that that's part of what you're destined to do, keep on pushing, keep on going, let us know how it goes. Absolutely brilliant. Another thing that we discovered through the 200 word challenge was the incredible results of people focusing on just trying to get those 200 words done. But um, I sat down and did some number crunching as well and found out that on average people, we're doing this obviously in the academy as well, and there's direct accountability in the academy on the 200 word challenge, but we're finding that people are writing uh, around 530 words per day when they aiming just to write 200. So this is incredible, almost like tripling of word count that people are seeing. And interestingly, we're seeing a higher percentage in the academy than it is for the people who are taking part in the general 200 word challenge. And I think that's due to the accountability and the writing buddy system that we have. Um, But it just shows you the importance of accountability and not trying to do this all on your own. Um, And the average Academy member has been knocking out 200,000 words a year, which is absolutely amazing. When you think about the average size of a book being 70,000, that's nearly three books worth of content that they're writing a year. So congratulations to everyone who's been consistent in that because we know that it's the hardest thing to establish. But what have we learned? What are some of the deeper and maybe surprising things that have come out of all of the conversations that we've had with the many different types of authors on this show? Um, So I put together my six reasons why people write, the reasons why we show up, which are often not talked about, But when you dig deep under the surface and you really look at the, you know, the big life reasons why people write and why it's important to keep writing, these are some of the things that really touched me the most. And I heard, you know, many times again and again from different types of authors. So I've compiled them for you in a countdown list just for fun today. So let's start with number six. And it's a a massive one. Writing a book, finishing a book is a huge life achievement. You know, sometimes we don't step back and think about the bigger picture of what we're doing when we write a book. But we all know that, you know, if you ask most people in the streets, you know, have you ever thought about writing a book? Most people will say yes. In fact, there was a survey that said of all the people that wanted to write a book, 
um, one in six people actually started that process. So the very fact, if you sat down to write today, or if you are, you know, at the beginning of your book, or if you've even finished a book, you know, you are in the minority of people. One in six people only start a book when they actually want to write one. The crazy thing is that only 3% of people who start a book finish it. So when you think about that, one in six going then down to 3% of people actually start, you know, if you're anywhere near that magic finish line of your first novel, or you've passed that finish line, or maybe you've written multiple books, you are in a tiny percentage of the world population. And so I want to just honor you today. And if you're on that journey to really, you know, the marathon of getting that book written, I want to honor you as well, because what you're accomplishing is a huge life achievement. You know, this is something that I think about this a lot. I dwell on this idea about when we get to the end of our lives and we look back on what we've done with our time here, what we've achieved, the things that we're most proud of what we've done. I'm really certain in my heart that there is no one on their deathbed who would ever look back and say, oh, I really regret writing that book. I think it's one of the most incredible accomplishments that you can do in your lifetime. And it's not just the act of finishing it. It's the fact that there is a real roller coaster ride with writing. It's an up and down journey, as many of you will, will know and feel day to day in many cases. And it's like a marathon. It's not just about the finish line. It's not just about the accomplishment of getting it done, which is obviously huge. But it's about the fact that you got through those hurdles that you ran during the good times and you push through the hard times as well. And I really do think that when you stop and dwell on this a bit, you realize that it really mirrors a lot of our life journey. Um, you know, we have, we have good days and bad days, good months and good years, and bad years with our life. And in a way, the writing of a book is very much mirroring that. Um, so I think we learn a lot by going through the process that we take with us, not just when we write our second book, but we take with us back into our lives. And it teaches us so much about persistence and keeping positive, keeping focus, keeping the end in, light, in sight, um, making ourselves accountable, not making excuses, you know, why we can't write, we don't have the time to write, you know, looking for solutions. It's all part of this incredible journey. And I think that's one of the reasons why people write. We might not say it out loud, but that really, really resonates with me. All right. So number five in the countdown list, why reasons why people write. And uh, this is a bit of a, a nod to Mark Stay, who, who would always mention this. And that is that writing helps you make sense of your world and the world. So by taking the time to sit down and write, we know that we're doing much more than just telling a story or creating a you know, how-to book or a non-fiction book. We're actually spending time processing how we see the world. We're also spending a lot of time in the case of thinking about others, thinking about developing a character, somebody who's maybe the opposite of us or similar to us, but different, is we're putting ourselves in their shoes and we're creating a sense of empathy of what it must be like to be one of those characters you know what's it like to live in a in the shoes of um you know a detective or um you know an alien or somebody in the war or um you know thinking about if we're writing a how-to book or a non-fiction book thinking about the reader that we're writing for and the things that they're going through in their life and the things we want to help them with and things we want them to help change or achieve in their lives and by doing that, we're actually processing and making sense of their world and our world. And we get this much bigger, wider angled lens of what's happening around us. Uh, it also helps us process things that we're going through uh, from, you know, um, coming into that in a minute. But there's, it helps us go and spend the time to dwell on these things, which we otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't ever do. So making sense of your world is that immediate world around you and also the world in your head because we know that we have a very um active imagination we're incredibly creative we have the you know conversations with with the characters in our head or um with with the different versions of ourselves and that's us processing our world but when 
you then take that larger. It helps us to make sense of the larger world around us. Um, and again, what that gives us in the world as human beings, as citizens, you know, in our country, in the communities we live in, is something far greater than I think we could ever get um, if we didn't take ourselves to those places to really stop and think about what it must be like to be that certain character. And I think that makes us better people. I think this idea of empathy is something that often lacks so much in the world. It's, you know, when we think about the, uh, the me generation instead of the we generation, I do think that um, the more that we spend time putting ourselves in, into the kind of lives of others in our, in our imagination, or even if we're researching a book, you know, you might go and talk to someone who's actually living that life. It can only make us a better person, more compassionate human being. And uh, uh, we learn so much going through that process. And I just found that the people that, you know, the people in the academy, uh, the listeners that have written to us, the authors that we get on the show, they're just solid, lovely people. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think, you know, writing helps us nurture the very best of ourselves um, as we delve deep into that. Now, number four on the list and I kind of insinuate this earlier, is writing improves your well-being. And this was one of the biggest surprises that we had. Mark and I did an episode, um, I think it was in the 300 somewhere. Uh, you'd have to look it up on the website, but it was about mental health. And I always remember that it was one of the biggest responses we had to an episode that we'd done. And it really knocked us out of the blue. I mean, we knew that it was an important topic and we wanted to kind of focus a bit on it but it really connected so deeply with many, many listeners. And I do think, and I hear this time and time again, that writing is therapy. It can be a form of um, working through your stuff, working through your issues, you know, um, making sense of things that have happened to you in your past. And I do believe that writing can be one of the best things, if not the best thing that you can do for your mental health. Because what we're doing when we're writing is it's really a process of refinement and improvement. You know, if you think about the actual process, you write a really, you know, difficult first draft, you get to the end of it, and you know, it might not make complete sense and it needs a bit of rearranging. And then we go through this process of refinement, like how do we make it really click together and work? And then through that process of refinement, we're also improving what we're creating until we get to that point where really the final version of my book is unrecognizable from that really difficult first draft that we've written. And the same process is what we go through, I think, within our well-being and our mental health. You know, we do go through a process of having to sometimes unpack stuff and, and throwing it all out on the table and, and, you know, facing our fears. That's a lot of the times that we may write about that. And working out what it is that we want to keep, what we want to put in our story, what we want to let go of. Um, it's so hard to measure because it's so intangible. But I do believe underneath the surface, you know, think about an iceberg, tip of the iceberg pointing out, you know, at the top of the ocean. But that huge part of the iceberg underneath is the kind of change that we go through on a conscious and subconscious level by writing. And I just think that it's something that's so undervalued um, and no matter how hard your writing session has been, it's very rare that you come out of a writing session feeling way, way worse than you went in. I'd say, yeah, obviously there's times when that happens, but when you have a really difficult writing session, but I'd say the majority of the time people come away from their writing sessions feeling good about what they've done or just feeling good about the fact that they've spent some time writing. So don't underestimate the power of what writing is doing for you in your life. Um, it's hard to measure, like I say, but wow, what a difference it makes. It really, really does. Now let's get into the even bigger stuff. So number three in the countdown list is the reason people write is I believe they want to leave a legacy. And we've talked about this a number of times on the podcast, but writing a book is creating something outside of our life. It's something which lives beyond us. Words, you know, have a infinite life, really, ultimately. Like you think about some of the texts that we can you know, go and look at in, say, the British Library or libraries in New York, where there's, there's ancient texts from thousands of years ago. Those words are still there. And every time you sit down to put pen on paper, that's what you're doing. You're creating words that can be shared 
for generations. Um, we don't know to what extent they will be, but nor did any of the uh, you know great writers of of you know the past number of centuries. They didn't know that their books would be even referenced today in schools and the like. So. I think it's something to be celebrated and it's something which is quite unique in a lot of creative art forms. Yeah, that for sure. You, you can create things that last, last for generations, but in the case of paintings or statues, uh, sculptures, these can be broken. There's only one version of them, one original, whereas writing can be duplicated, it can be replicated, which gives it a power of longevity. And like I'm tying in with the first idea of you know, finishing a book is a huge lifetime achievement. I really do think this idea of leaving a legacy is partly why we show up in the world. It gives our life a purpose. I mean, if you think of it, for every parent who's out there, one of the biggest legacies that you've created are your children or your child that you've had. And, you know, in theory, they hopefully live beyond you, but, you know, you kind of live through them as they go out into the world as adults. And, Writing is, again, something which is of that level of power, you know, something that you created. It's also a kind of a a look into your mind, you know. There's a lot of things we do externally, um, which, you know, people might talk about our personality or some work that we created, which, you know, can be appreciated in the moment. But you're really opening and letting people into the inner workings of who you are, how you tick, how you see the world. Um, and that's an incredible gift to, to put into the world. And moving on to the number, number two, and this is the second uh, most important reason that I believe people write, is that people understand that they are giving a gift to the world. And I think this is one of the most important things to remember because when we're struggling with our story, with our, with our nonfiction book, when we're just not sure, you know, if it's going to be any good, if we should keep writing it, whether we should start on something else, it's really important to keep pushing through because if we can get out of the way of ourselves as a writer and put our egos to one side and realizing that what we're actually creating here is something that we want to share with the world, suddenly it doesn't become about us. It becomes about what we're creating for other people. And I've always said this, but for anyone who's ever um, volunteered, um, you know, maybe a local charity or a local community event, you might work at a local homeless shelter or, um, you know, help out a thrift store or be a part of some charity. It's some of the most rewarding work that you can do when you kind of put yourself in service of others helps us kind of step out of the way of our problems and, you know, help others. And it gives us a sense of worth. And in many ways, writing a book is a very similar process. It's this idea that once that book is finished and we release it into the world, it is there for everyone to enjoy, make use of, learn from, get inspired by. And I think it's really important to never underestimate the power of what you're doing when you're creating a book. And that's why it's so important to finish it because there's, you know, if you're baking a cake for someone's birthday, you wouldn't like show up at the house with half a cake baked. Right? And that's kind of, you know, what you've got to keep pushing through to get that, that book done, completed and out there so that people can share it with others, learn from it, um, enjoy it, escape from the life that whatever it is that's happening in their life. There are so many gifts for the book that you create numerous ones that are impossible to list. But ultimately, that's what you're doing when you're writing a book. If you can get out of the way of it, if you can make it less about you and the journey of the writer and more about why you're creating it, it gets you through the hardest of times. And I think it's a really powerful, powerful gift as well. So what is the number one reason I believe people write or the reason that people write? And it even goes beyond the gift of the book that you're creating. It's even bigger than the huge life achievement that you create, um, bigger than how you make sense of your world, bigger than helping your well-being. Um, it's kind of linked to leaving a legacy, but it's even bigger than the specific legacy you leave as a writer. 
And the number one reason people write, I believe, is to inspire the next generation of writers. Now, it's a biggie because if you think about it, what inspired you to write? You know, we ask that question many, many times to authors on this show. And they'll usually pick, you know, a novel they once read, a writer who inspired them. Um, but it's like a circle of life that happens within the writing world. Um, and many creative art forms as well, but you know what individually inspired you. It may have been a collection of writings that you did. It might be, uh, you know, that your parents wrote. It could be that you had a teacher that you really appreciated at school that taught you about writing. But really, we're part of this big cycle where by showing up and continuing this journey of writing, sharing stories with the world, sharing advice with the world, um, giving people an and a kind of inside of you or a unique aspect into a different culture or a different time in history or a different imaginary planet that you're writing about. You are helping them think about whether they want to write a book as well. And really, when we think about this from a historical perspective, it's easy to forget that before the internet and the ease of sharing all these stories and information that we can now do, and we take often for granted, the way in which knowledge was shared through tribes, through societies and communities was through storytelling. And, you know, most of it was not written down. Most of it was sitting around the campfire, sitting in a community meeting, listening to elders and these stories would be passed down and it's the way in which as a world we've generated all this knowledge. It's the way we pass it on. And the way we do that through books is really just kind of formalizing it so it can, you know, be documented and, and uh, you can have your name stuck on the front of it and put in a library for people to find or a bookshop or on the, on the internet. But when you think about it, every single piece of knowledge that we've ever learnt about was at some point discovered and then passed on. And in many ways, when you write a book, you're not just inspiring the next generation of writers, you're inspiring this much bigger way in which the whole human race functions, which is the passing on of knowledge, the passing on of knowledge through stories, the lessons that we learn through history, um, better ways of doing things in the future. And it's all because you're writing that book. You know, and no one person can say what they're writing is any more or less important than anyone else's. It's part of the whole cycle and the whole journey. And you're a part of that when you write. So I really hope that these bigger ideas and concepts of what I've learned through the podcast in the last seven and a half years, you know, the kind of under the surface reasons why we write have really inspired you today to really focus on your project. You're, you know, no matter how, how you're doing, where you are, if you're really stuck, I want you to keep pushing through because I want you to remember that you're part of something which is far, far greater than really any of us can really truly fully understand or imagine. It's quite incredible when you start to really dive in. And I also want to leave you this thought as well. And that is that writing, the process of writing, not finishing the book, which is obviously a huge milestone, but the process of writing is living the dream. And we talk about this idea and we've asked many, many uh, authors on the show, we've often joked, oh, you're living the dream, you've sold a million books. But I truly believe that you're living the dream if you sit down and you write, if you can every day, but the fact that you're sitting down and writing is living the dream as a writer. You might not have a publishing contract yet, you might not have an agent, you may have not published a book yet, that doesn't mean that you're not living the dream. Living the dream is actually the action of doing the very thing that you most want to do. And for many of you, I know that's writing. So when you stand back from it, always remember that something much greater is going on every time you sit down to write. And it's truly worthwhile and it's truly worthwhile the struggle, <laughs> pushing through the hard times um, 
the time it takes, you know, the, the commitment that you have to have to actually really write, you know, a book and then edit a book and re-edit a book and go through all the drafting processes and learning the pro learning the craft. And most importantly, working on your mindset, you know, to help you get through those times. It's all about living the dream and inspiring others to live theirs. So I want to personally thank you today if you are writing, if you've ever been inspired by any of the authors we've interviewed, um, any of the uh, little bits of nuggets that we've delved into. I mean, the masses of writing advice that we've gathered on this show over the last seven and a half years. I want to thank you for being a part of that journey, um, being brave, courageous, and going deep within yourselves to see what's there, to see what you can pull out, uh, to see where your greatness lies, because that's the other thing is that you learn so much about yourself what's going through this process. Um, and it helps you show up in life in different ways. Um, and I just want to encourage you to keep going. It's a huge, huge endeavor. And anyone that takes it on is worthy of every success they get. Um, so tell me, like, write to me, tell me when you finish that book, tell me when you have breakthroughs so that we can celebrate with you. Uh, this incredible journey that you're on. And whilst I was planning this podcast today, I started writing some other things and it went off on a completely different tangent. But what I've developed is I've developed another podcast uh, episode, which is around the idea of the 10 habits of highly successful authors. So what I've done is I've pulled out you know, the th traits that I've seen amongst so many of the people that we've interviewed that seem very, very common. And I'm going to save that for another day, but it'll be another countdown episode that I'll do. And you won't want to miss it because there's some great traits. And I really want to know how many of those you recognize in yourself and the ones that maybe you haven't yet nailed down or have really got on top of. It will give you a kind of opportunity to kind of focus on those as goals over the next, you know, couple of months and uh, next couple of years as well. Brilliant, folks. Well, listen, before we dive in any further, I want to thank everyone who's supported this show, every patron who's ever subscribed and donated a bit to the running costs of the show, every Academy member. Um, you guys are just in such an incredible bunch of people. And, uh, you know, when I talk about this kind of depth of what I see in people. Um, a lot of it has actually come not just from working with the authors, but also working with and getting to know members of the Academy, the bestseller Academy, which are, you know, people, typically people who've listened to this podcast and decided they wanted to take their journey deeper, um, go get coached, you know, by myself and a number of other coaches. Um, but many of you have inspired today's episode as well. So thank you very much. And on that note, I'd like to thank our patron of the week, one of our longest standing patrons, uh, Jan Carr. Jan's been with this show and supporting this show for many, many years. So thank you, Jan. You are our patron of the week. And our Academy member of the week this week is Richard Beasley. Now, Richard is an incredible guy who, you know, is writing his book um, and also flying around the country, saving people's lives in, in the ER. Um, such an amazing person. But today, Richard, we're honoring you as Academy Member of the Week for your major writing breakthrough uh, in building your daily writing habit, because you cannot underestimate how incredibly challenging it is to build that habit. And Richard is absolutely flying right now. He's banked, I think he told me today, 14,000 words, which is the most he's ever done in his pursuit of writing. And he's managing to get streaks of days together of writing, which again, he's never managed to do before. And there's this real momentum building. So Richard, we want to just honor you and continually encourage you just to keep on going. Another 14,000, another two week streak, whatever it takes could keep on going and get to the end of that first draft, which we can't wait to celebrate with you. So if you'd like to be like Jan, if you'd like to support this show, you can do so by popping along to bestsellerexperiment.com forward slash support and sign up as a patron. Uh, we are so grateful for every single person that sees the value in this show and wants to support the future of the show. And if you'd like to be like Richard and be an amazing member of the Academy, you can join the Academy today by popping along to academy.bestsellerexperiment.com. That's academy.bestsellerexperiment.com. 
All right, folks, as always, we'd like to celebrate the successes of some of our listeners, the Academy members and people in our BXP team. And this week we're, we're celebrating something called progress logs, which is uh, one of the features within the Academy. Uh, it's almost like a kind of personal diary of your writing journey and your progress within your writing, your breakthroughs, your struggles. And each Academy member kind of shares theirs um, with all the Academy members. And there's been a lot of great um writing and pro progress logs in the last couple of weeks. So I want to just honor Katie, Alex, Lee, and Amy for um, what they've written in their progress logs this week. And, uh, you know, it's been absolutely brilliant reading through those. And we also want to celebrate writing streaks as well. For those of you to do 200 word challenge, you know, it's not just about writing 200 words. It's about trying to write 200 words and in sequence, how many days can you string together where you do that? And what's your, what's your kind of like personal best? And we've had some amazing writing streaks uh, in the academy. Andrea, Gloria, Katie, Naomi, and Fiona, you know, two, three, four, five, even six week writing streaks that are happening there right now of consecutive days, seven days a week, which is absolutely amazing. We're also celebrating Amy this week, who shares that she now has a Substack. There's a lot of talk around Substack. I like the idea of Substack. I like the idea that people support um, the work that you're doing. And I think it could be a really interesting model for the future. So Amy has dived into that and decided to set up her own Substack. So we want to wish you all the best with that. It's a very exciting um, part of uh, life of an author. And uh, Amy's actually using it to kind of uh, you know, almost like an extended version of a progress log as well. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can use it um, and share your journey with others. And on the BXP team, Mike Shackle has shared that he has seen a, a really decent percentage increase in his income when he's made the switch from fantasy to detective novels. Um, so this is, just, I mean, first, this is brilliant, Mike, because not only have you tried it and you've seen a success in terms of people supporting you in your in your endeavors of writing and you know voting for more of that but also that's a massively courageous thing to kind of shift genres i know there's lots of people that write in different genres and they you know they, they jump around but you know if you've been working in one genre for an, for a long time it it can feel a massive risk and a massive like bungee jump to suddenly try something different um but i'm so so happy mike to hear that it's um it's really worked for you. And, and Mike is one of those authors I'm a referenced earlier about, you know, some of the authors who had kind of given up and then heard the podcast and got going again. And Mike is a, one of those shining lights, one of those examples of an absolutely incredible career revitalized and, uh, you know, amazing motivate mo momentum now and motivation. Uh, so keep that up, Mike, keep, keep sending us your, um, ex excellent news. And if you've got any wins you'd like to share with us this week and pop along to the website and, uh, fill out the contact form. Um, I do read every single one of those that comes through and, uh, you know, we will shout out the best of the best on the show. So if you've enjoyed the music you heard on, today, or heard on today's show, including the bestseller experiment theme, you can check out um, all the music that I've done on my music project of Myth Club. Uh, you can hear on Spotify and uh, Apple Music and all good music stores. Um, if, you, if you fancy subscribing uh, to get more music in the future as well, that, that would be absolutely brilliant. And talking of subscribing, you can join us on our YouTube channel as well, at Bestseller Experiment, where you can see live video versions of episodes and if you would like to join us on socials we would love to get you involved in the conversation it's also a great way of sending us your new news and updates um or if you'd like to share the podcast with other people this is a great way to do it pop along to our socials and on facebook we're at bestseller experiment and on x we're at bestseller xp along with instagram threads and pinterest all at bestseller xp so if you would like to check out today's show notes, we always put a mass load of information uh, on the podcast page for each episode at bestsellerexperiment.com website. And whilst you're there, why not sign up to our weekly newsletter to get um, ongoing updates and overviews about every episode that we put out there. And uh, like I mentioned before, if you would like to get that book written, the way to do it is the 200 Word Challenge. Pop along to 200wordchallenge.com and join up thousands of others who've already banked nearly 40 million words and build your daily writing habit. I'd just like to thank you all for being with me on this incredible milestone of the 500th episode. 
Uh, if it's your first, welcome. And if it's your 500th, thank you. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant bringing this podcast to you over the last seven and a half years with 500 episodes. And um, yeah, please spread the word, tell your friends. And I really appreciate the time you've spent with me today. So it's a goodbye from Mark DeVoe, a.k.a. Bookmark. Goodbye. What are your writing dreams? Finishing that book? Quitting the day job? Becoming a best-selling author? Since 2016, we've interviewed and studied the advice of over 500 best-selling authors who've collectively sold over 1 billion books. And in the Best Seller Academy, we've incorporated powerful and proven strategies for success, inspiring fiction and non-fiction authors just like you to reach new heights and write their best book ever. Ready to take your writing to the next level with accountability, craft, coaching, and the most inspiring and exclusive community of like-minded writers? Well, your bestseller dreams are just a click away. Join us today at bestsellerexperiment.com forward slash academy. That's bestsellerexperiment.com forward slash academy.